Let's open our Bible in the book of Genesis, if you will stand with me. Uh, this is more of a teaching type and preaching, or preach if you want to call it that way. But let the Spirit of God work in us. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 11. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass and herb, or the herb yielding seed. Shall we say seed? And the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself. Yung buto, mga kapatid, ay naroon po mismo sa bunga na atin pong uh, aanihin upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself, not outside element, but the seed should be coming from itself after his kind. And God saw it was good. When you receive God's approval, you'll be fine. It doesn't matter what other people will say. If you have the vis visitation of God, and God said it was good, it doesn't matter what the critic will say, we'll be okay. Ladies, it doesn't matter what the world will think of you, as long as God said you are okay, we can live with that. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Mabaging Diyos, maraming salamat sa iyong kabutihan sa pagkakabasa po ng iyong salita. Amin pong dalangin ay ko po ang siyang mangusap at magmulat po sa aming mga kaisipan, kahalagahan ng binhi, ng salita ng ating Panginoong Diyos na tinanggap namin, Panginoon. Ito po, Panginoong Diyos, ay amin pong pag-iingatan hanggang sa iyong muling pagbabalik. I pray that you will touch my lips and pray that you will touch every heart and every mind today. Accomplish your purpose, God, and your will for your glory and for your honor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you put your Bibles down and let us put our hands together and lift up the name of the Lord. Pittsburgh in Norway, and you can see that in our slide. It is a vault that contains seed from everywhere in the world. The seed vault has the capacity to store 4.5 million different kinds of seed. Every variety will contain an average seed of 500 seed per volt. At ito, mga kapatid, has a maximum seed of 2.5 billion seed that you can store inside this vault. This vault should be placed under this mountain covered by ice, that serves as a freezer. They, ma they need to maintain a minus 18 degrees to preserve the seed coming from all over the world, including Mindanao, Philippines. And the purpose of this is to preserve because they believe that there will be a catastrophic event that will take place and it, wipe, it will wipe the entire plants and trees all over the world. So when that thing happened, 
they can withdraw some of the seeds and plant and replenish the earth. So this is real deal. As a matter of fact, last February of 2018, they add another $13 million just to renovate, renovate and keep this up to the code. It stores about, right now, at the present, 1,059,646 deposits coming from different uh, uh, area of the world. Now, ang purpose nila, mga kapatid, is to preserve the seed. To preserve the seed. And I do believe that the church is still here, even though we believe that the coming of the Lord is at hand. Because we have a mandate from the Holy Ghost, uh, amen, to preserve this apostolic seed that we receive. Now, the way to preserve this is not to store in a cold, frozen vault. But the way to preserve this seed is to plant this seed deep and wide in the hearts of men wherever we go. That's the best way to preserve it, uh, to multiply it, uh, amen, and make it uh, uh, a fruitful endeavor for each one of us. Uh, if we will simply copy the idea of uh, the Spitz, uh, uh, Bergen, Norway, then we will die anyway. But the way God wants us to do, uh, amen, is to die and plant the seed and let it produce its own kind. Can you say praise the Lord? The problem also why Spitsbergen, Norway wants to preserve the seed because they are afraid of what's taking place in our world today. Mayroon pong mga scientists, mga kapatid, na kung saan they are trying to duplicate the production of the seed not according to the basic principle of the Word of God in the book of Genesis chapter 1, but according to man's principle of modifying the seed and make it more productive in a faster, more uh, 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 speedy way. May, maybe some of you are familiar with the term genetically modified seed. 80% of our consumption of food has some sort of GMO, genetically modified organism. Idea ng tao, mga kapatid. This is an idea wherein they want to speed up the process. Uh, amen. That instead of a full season of harvest uh, or, or taking care of, of harvest, uh, amen, they can just reduce the amount of time. Uh, amen. And they can harvest more seed. Ang organism na ito, mga kapatid, will take a faster route. It has been engineered to produce more. An organism whose genome will be injected into a desired substance or seed para ito ay makapag-produce, mga kapatid, at Ma lumago. Para sa atin po mga kapatid, ito ay parang sa idea natin ngayon ay another virus will be injected to the substance para ma-modify mga kapatid yung process ng harvest. Ito po ay hindi bago mga kapatid. It was uh, produced 40 to 50 years ago na kung saan Naggather mga kapatid ang ilang mga scientists and they try to create 
a harvest from soybeans na kung saan dahil sa ang soybeans mga kapatid ay very uh, 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 small papaano sila makakapag harvest ng soybeans o makakapag uh, uh, spray ng soybeans at patayin ang mga weeds bisa plant na hindi maapektuhan ang soybeans. So, nag-isip sila mga kapatid ng isang way na kung saan mass spraying of herbicide na ang mamamatay lamang mga kapatid ay yung mga damo at hindi yung soybeans. So, ang mga scientists na ito, if you will go to the next side, slide, ang mga scientists na ito mga kapatid ay nakaroon ng idea na why don't we inject a genome to, not that one, I'm sorry, let's just stick to the other one, a genome na kung saan maiimmune ang soybean plant sa herbicide. So, kumuha sila ng mga sample seed and they inject that with virus, amen, coming from a weed killer or herbicide. So, when they started to spray these herbicides on a hectares and hectares of land of soybeans, immune na mga kapatid yung mga soybeans at hindi sila nangamatay when they spray some herbicides. So it works, but this is not the will of God. This is not the plan of God. This is not the idea of God based on the book of Genesis. Because in the book of Genesis, a seed must produce its own kind after its seed coming from its own kind without man's intervention. Another example, mga kapatid, ay Salmon. Sino sa inyo ang ma mahilig kumain ng salmon maliban po kay Brother Jojo Serrano? Ang salmon, mga kapatid, there's another, another idea. Ang, ang science, mga scientist na ito ay nag, nag, nagkaroon ng plano na how can we produce more salmon na kung saan hindi sila mga ma mamamatay kasi pag nagpunta uh, uh, ang salmon, mga kapatid, sa cold area, namamatay sila, mga kapatid. At hindi sila nakakapag-produce ng more, more uh, eggs. So ang ginawa nila, the idea of GMO, why don't we modify the eggs of some of this salmon and let us inject this seed with a genome coming from an antifreeze? Alam niyo anti-freeze, mga kapatid, sa sasakyan ninyo? So, in-inject nila yan, mga kapatid, sa egg ng salmon. So, when the salmons will, will go up north, amen, to lay eggs, hindi sila namamatay, mga kapatid, and they can produce more eggs and bigger salmons. Kaya, mas masarap yung wild, mga kapatid, from Alaska. Mas masarap pa rin kayo ninyo. At least, hindi sila genetically modified Salmon. Kaya yung mga mahilig sa sushi, mga kapatid, magkanding na lang kayo. But that's not the end of the story. Another story is goat. There is a demand for goat milk. Pero ang goat milk, mga kapatid, ay hindi po masyadong smooth. Ang, ang texture, mga kapatid, so nag-gather uli, mga kapatid, ang mga scientists, mga kapatid, so they decided, why don't we genetically modified, amen, the, the genome of goat and let us inject, uh, amen, a genome coming from a spider web. So they inject that and modify the genome of goat milk uh, and it turns out to be a silky, smooth, Milk from goat. Some of you are amazed right now. You can go to a grocery store, amen, and you can look for milk, you can look for cookies, you can look for all kinds of product and check the back of the box and you will see some of the labels that says non-GMO. 
It means this is organic, this is pure, this was not uh, modified, and you, you can be safe by doing that. Can you say praise the Lord? So uh, this DNA out of spider webs will create, uh, amen, a smoother, silky milk. But again, this is not the idea of God. This is man's idea. This is how sometimes man operate because we want more production. We want more result. We want more. Come on, somebody. Amen. We want more numbers to brag to other people. So we customize and we modify things that only God can produce. I... I better contain myself here. This is man's idea. Man's idea is all about herbicide to modify soybeans, salmon with antifreeze, spider with hybrid, hallelujah, milk from goat. The design of God. And allow me to read that again to you is this. Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. Whose seed is in itself. Upon the earth, and it was so, and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. By God's design, we need to produce the same kind of seed. If you receive an apostolic seed, you better produce the same apostolic seed. If you receive a doctrine from the Word of God, you better produce the same kind of seed that's not modified, that doesn't have a GMO in it. It's seed after its kind. The problem with genetically modified seed is this. It may look good, it may look pleasing because you have more production, you have more harvest. But the problem with the seed that was modified is this. Are you ready? You cannot plant the seed coming from a modified fruit for the next harvest. A fruit, a seed coming from a modified fruit uh, can only be good uh, for one season. It may look good. Oh, we are growing. Hallelujah. Oh, the church is packed. Oh, the church is full because you modify the seed. But let me tell you something. It won't last. Because you can only plant that seed for that particular harvest. Yeah. It may sound surprising to you, but that's the truth. So we modify. Let's just, let's just modify our standards. Yeah. So people can, can, can come to the house of God more. Let, let's me church friendly church. Let's copy the other church on the other side. Let's change the way we worship. Let's change the way we praise. Let's change the way we preach. Come on, let's change the way we dress. Let's modify the seed of this apostolic truth. You will get the result. People will come. People will attend. People will rah-rah with you. Hey folks, uh, when 
the storm comes. Amen. When trials come, hallelujah, you will not see them anymore because there is no true seed of the word of God. The seed that they receive is simply modified. I've been a licensed minister of this precious organization for more than 30 years now. Don't put the date on me right now. Ah, uh, 30 years. So, mga, ah, 45 years old day si pastor. We have seen a lot of ministers who sacrifice their lives for the seed. The likes of Pastor Libre, Pastor Alcantara, Pastor Zarzuelo, Pastor Rompad, Pastor Edralin, Pastor Amper, and the rest, and the list goes on and on and on and on. They gave everything to the last breath, but they did not modify the seed of the word. They died declaring this apostolic truth to the last breath. I want to speak to the younger generation. You may feel that you have this so-called entitlement. You will just take a church uh, that was planted uh, and birthed uh, with tears and blood and prayer and fasting uh, and you will take uh, that apostolic church uh, and try to modify the truth. Uh, shame on you. There is a mandate from the Lord. That we need to preserve this apostolic truth. The likes of Art Martinez, Alfred Bodegas, uh, amen, and the rest, uh, and the Mario Pestaños uh, won't be here forever. I myself uh, won't be standing here forever. We need some young blood who will say, Pastor, don't worry. We will preserve this apostolic truth no matter what. You don't need to modify the seed. You don't need to lower your standards. Did you know that there are some areas in North America they believe that baptism of the Holy Ghost is no longer essential for salvation? And they will say that baptism of the Holy Ghost is just part of the gift. This is one way on how they modify the seed. We still need to declare that repentance and baptism in the name of Jesus and in filling of the Holy Ghost with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. These are all essentials. These are all apostolic seed. These are all the truth that we need to declare and proclaim and plant not just for this generation but for the coming generation. You want growth, you will see growth. You want a full house, you will see a full house. But if you modify the seed of this apostolic truth, this will not last for the next generation. But I believe that you can still have a full house. You can still have revival. If you will still stick on this apostolic seed, regardless of what the world will say.
Come on, somebody. I wish I have some more believers in the house tonight. Hallelujah. Who will declare, I believe in this apostolic truth. This is the design of God. This is the design of God. A few years back, calamity covered the country of Haiti. Burn all the crops. Disaster relief came from US of A. Not everything coming from US of A is good. Just a thought. Man, you're quiet. So a relief fund came from United States and they deliver truckloads of seed, Pastor. And they call it Monsanto seed. Next slide. What this Haitian did is after receiving this seed donated by other country, they burn these crops. And they said, you gave us seed, but you are only concerned for this generation. We don't need a seed that will only feed this generation. What we need is a seed that we can plant for our sons and daughters, for our next generation, for our grandkids and granddaughters. What we need is a seed that we can reproduce. Hallelujah! Over and over and over again. What we need is an apostolic seed that we can plant, not just for this era, but for the next century, if the Lord tarries. My concern is not just my salvation and my generation. My concern is my next... I, by the way, I am a newly granddad. Five months old, Eli... Thank you. And when I look at this boy, I said, I call my son, Josel, and I put my arms around him and I said, son, you received the truth from your dad. Look at the face of your son. I want you to deliver the same apostolic seed that you received from me. Don't modify it. Don't change it. Don't customize it. I want him to live according to the truth, according to the plan, according to the design of the Almighty God. Sitting with Glendover Paris at the airport and at our plane, we're sitting side by side. And I listen to this young man, and I don't want to sound biased here, but listening to this man and talking about his generation and Mishael and, and, and Judah and, and all kinds. And I said, God, I'm thankful that we have this next generation of believers. And I'm speaking for the Mishaels and the Glendovers and the Judas of this hour. You better not succumb to the temptation of the world trying to change this apostolic truth that you receive from your father. That you receive, amen, that your father received from another generation. That your father received from the own pad of the previous generation. These are generation of seed, amen, handed over to us and to you and to the next generation. And as long as we preserve this apostolic seed, this apostolic church will not only survive, 
but this apostolic truth will thrive for the glory of God. Clap your hands if you believe it. You know, the problem with many saints of God is even ministers of God, they choose to live a life of offense than to be offended. I mean, their lifestyle is just a life of being offended. Anything you do is wrong. Anything you say is terrible. Amen. Because everything, everywhere they go and everything, everywhere they look, it's just a life of offense. And the way they see this is it became a, a, a barrier, a shield, because they don't want to be offended again. I don't want to be offended anymore, so I'm going to live my life a life of offense. This is me. And, but that is wrong. Because the Bible tells us, you will be offended because of Him. Offense will come. And in, in all sorts of sizes. It will come to us. The kingdom of God, amen, it will face offense. But if you will read in the book of Matthew chapter 6, Jesus talked about another kind of seed. That's the only seed that Jesus used as an illustration pertaining to our faith. I'm talking about the mustard seed. From time to time, Jesus will say, if you have a faith like of a mustard seed, amen, you will say to the sycamine tree, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, amen, and you will live. You know what is a sycamine tree? A sycamine tree is a tree that will produce a sycamine fruit. That's a revelation to you guys. That's deep. A sycamine fruit has a round fruit with spikes. Murag to yumba. Okay, when that when you step on that sycamine fruit, you will be offended. Masakit mga kapatid, matusok. So Jesus Christ said in the book of Luke chapter 17, if I'm not mistaken, is that if you have a faith like a mustard seed, then you can say to this offensive fruit of sycamine tree, be thou cast into the sea, then we will stay and live right for God. Now, let me qualify this. I've been here long enough, seen long enough, heard long enough to see that people who left the organization not because they don't like the doctrine. I've got the backing of these three men here. So if, if I messed up, you charge it to them. They, they left the organization not because of doctrine. They believe the oneness of God. They believe the standard of holiness. They believe worship. As a matter of fact, some of them are worshipers. But they left the organization not because the organization is not perfect. They know that from the beginning uh, that this organization is far beyond perfect. But this is the best organization uh, I've ever known. I've seen the best Christians in our general board. They argue. They, they, they exchange suggestions. But at the end of the day, they are the best and the most Christian-like people. Pastor Bodegas, I let him sit in in our general board meeting. And it's an awesome thing to see. This is not a perfect organization. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. But we've got the seed. I said, we've got the seed. We've got this apostolic seed. 
that we need to preserve. So they left. Not everybody who left are, you know, terribly bad, but some of them left because of one reason. They were offended. At some point, I've seen it. Everywhere I look, they were offended. Somebody mistreated them. Somebody say things about them uh, behind their back. Uh, amen. A uh, 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 member transfer for, from their church to another church. Uh, amen. And they did not call and so on. And you can list all kinds of offense. It's there, folks. So they left. They did not use the one seed that Jesus recommended them to use. This mustard seed. That it doesn't matter what kind of offense it will come to you if you have a mustard kind of seed. You can say, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. You know how big a mustard seed? Next slide. Mustard seed is this big. 20 millimeter in size. Gamay pod. Tama ba yung saya ko? Pwede na rin. Pwede na rin. Gamay kayo, Mike Soon. And then it is so small, but when you plant the seed, it will unroot all kinds of trees. Look at this next slide. You see that kind of tree? You see the sign? You see the house? You see how humongous this mustard tree is coming from a small seed? Take for example, just, just, just by curiosity's sake. You have an offended tree on the other side. You have a sick of mind tree on the other side that causes you offense. And then you plant this faith seed, mustard seed on the side of sick of mind tree. You know what will happen? That sycamine tree will be uprooted out of the ground. And the only thing you will see is this mustard tree planted from a mustard seed. Folks, if you have a mustard seed, amen, you can stand all kinds of offense. If you have a faith like a mustard seed, you can stand all kinds of trials. You can stand all kinds of problem. You can stand all kinds of criticism. And you will preserve this apostolic seed in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands and praise the Lord. This is God's design. This is the plan of God. Something happened in India where they produce mustard that you place on your hot dog and sandwiches. They said the demand of a mustard is so huge coming from all over the world. They said, how can we meet the demand of this mustard? You know what's a mustard? The, the yellow ketchup. Yellow ketchup. <laughs> Murag ketchup ba? But it's yellow. So how can we meet the demand of this mustard? And then some group of scientists started to gather together. And they said, you know what? We've got an idea. Why don't we inject some genome? To this seed that will produce more mustard. And they try it. They try that. And they inject some virus and genome in a mustard seed. Guess what? Are you ready for this? They found out that the only seed that cannot be modified is a mustard seed. And you know what? You got it inside of you. I said, you got it inside of you. You got it inside of you. 
Go plant the seed of faith wherever you go and you will preserve this apostolic seed. The quality of faith that we have is not something to ignore. The quality of seed, young people, that you receive from your fathers, your mothers, your pastors, is something to behold and to be kept. Don't worry what other people will say. There is a demand, amen, for this truth. People are hungry. People are looking for something different. If we will customize our faith, if we will customize our belief, what's the difference between us and others? We are simply a denomination. But there's something in this apostolic truth that differs us from other organizations. We've got this apostolic truth of the Word of God. We need to preserve this seed. This seed remains the same. One Lord, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who are in you all, and through you all, and we are complete in Him. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. If I were you, I'm going to stand on my feet and I'm going to lift up my voice and I'm going to shout. I'm going to shout. I'm going to shout. I'm going to say thank you, Jesus, for this apostolic seed of the Word of God. Come on. Let heaven hurt you. Let heaven hear your voice. Let hell tremble at the sound of your voice. We will preserve this apostolic seed. Yeah. Yeah. Are you willing to answer the call of God? Young people, are you willing to say, you don't worry, pastor. You don't worry, dad. I am going to preserve. Here's, here's what the Lord wants us to do. You don't have to walk around if you see somebody whose age is 40 below. And you are older than 40. Doesn't matter if you are a pastor or a pastor's kid or whoever you are. I want you to extend your hand on their shoulder. Female to female, if you find it appropriate, you can do that. And young people, if you want somebody to lay hands on you and let that mantle of the truth be passed on you, I want you to step out of your places. Just young people. Just young people. I want you to look for someone right now. Go and, and stand beside somebody. Tell them, Pastor, I want you to lay your hands on me. I want you to pass on the mantle to me. And I assure you, I assure you, I am going to preserve this apostolic truth. You don't have to worry. I am going to keep this doctrine, this truth. For the next generation to come. That's it. That's it. Let the mantle be passed on you. Let the double portion be passed on you. Let the anointing of the Lord be passed on you. By the authority of the word of God. 
Come on, elder. Don't be afraid to pass on the anointing. Don't be afraid to bless somebody right now. Don't be afraid to tell them uh, that they will hold the fort uh, in the name of Jesus. <laughs>